on October 1st, 2018, a grim and unsettling discovery unfolded as an employee from the Ohio Department of Transportation stumbled upon a shocking scene. Along the desolate stretch of I-75 in Eagle Township, a sleeping bag revealed a haunting secret. Inside its confines, the dismembered lower portion of a male body was ominously concealed, painting a chilling picture of the unsettling events that had taken place. David Darnell Carter, a vibrant individual who left a lasting impact on the lives of countless people, was tragically murdered at the age of 39. His funeral drew a large crowd, reflecting the profound influence he had on others. David, known for his joyful nature, towering stature, and ability to infuse positivity into any situation, radiated a spirit of happiness that touched the hearts of all who knew him. Tasia, David's sister, shared a deep bond with him and considered them inseparable. While diligently working at a manufacturing plant, David nurtured a strong aspiration to embark on his own entrepreneurial journey. Driven by a clear vision of creating something meaningful and impactful, he displayed unwavering dedication in all of his pursuits and took great pride in his endeavors. Alongside his primary occupation, David tirelessly worked to establish his own clothing business, named Lavish Habits Unlimited. Through his remarkable work ethic and upright character, he earned widespread recognition as a trustworthy and honorable man. Angela, a lifelong friend of David's, affectionately shared his dreams of building a family and finding a loving partner. Throughout his life, David's world revolved around his beloved son, DJ, with whom he shared an unbreakable bond. DJ warmly reminisced about the multitude of activities they enjoyed together, a testament to his father's unwavering dedication and active involvement in his life. Recalling the immense joy David experienced upon becoming a father, Samaya, DJ's mother, fondly recounted the day of DJ's birth. David's excitement knew no bounds as he burst out of the delivery room, brimming with happiness, proudly announcing the arrival of his baby boy. Despite facing their fair share of challenges between 2000 and 2014, Samaya and David remained committed co-parents, even after their separation. In the middle of March 2018, David introduced his sister to a woman named Tammy, who Tasia had never encountered before. Surprisingly, Tammy and David had attended high school together and reconnected at a mutual friend's birthday party, which eventually blossomed into a romantic relationship. Tammy, who worked at the Detroit Medical Center and also served as a travel agent, was a mother of twins who were 18 years old when Tasia and the family met her. Angela, who went to high school with David and Tammy, recollected their shared background in graduation year. Angela described Tammy as a lively and dependable person, but acknowledged that after high school, many of their friends had taken separate paths. Angela discovered that Tammy and David were dating around March of 2018, which came as a surprise. She referred to it as a, quote, brow raiser, and as a friend, she wanted the best for David and expressed her happiness for him if he was content with the relationship. DJ, David's son, observed that Tammy and his father were spending a significant amount of time together during that period and started to speculate that Tammy might be the person David would eventually marry. Tasia expressed that David and Tammy appeared to be happy during the six months they had been together. However, Tasia also noticed that Tammy displayed signs of being possessive over David. According to David's father, during family gatherings, 
Tammy would closely watch David's interactions. Whenever David engaged in conversation with someone else, Tammy would keep a vigilant eye on him. Tasia openly admitted that she did not develop a liking for Tammy from the moment they met. In September 2018, six months into Tammy and David's relationship, a significant incident took place. On a Sunday, Samaya recounts that it started as a typical day when 16-year-old DJ was preparing to go to his father's house for the evening. However, Samaya received a text from David stating that he was feeling very sick and advised that DJ should not come over that night. DJ tried calling his father but received a text response from David instead, explaining that he couldn't answer the phone due to his illness. DJ informed his mother that he had some belongings at his father's apartment that he needed to retrieve. When DJ arrived at his father's apartment, he noticed Tammy outside, disposing of trash bags. He greeted Tammy and she hastily discarded the trash, hurrying towards the apartment door, seemingly attempting to beat DJ to it. To DJ's surprise, the front door was locked when he reached it. Assuming that Tammy had seen him approaching, he expected the door to be left unlocked for him. Using his key, he unlocked the front door and entered the apartment, where he was greeted by Tammy. DJ asked Tammy if she had seen his phone charger, but she responded that she hadn't. As DJ walked past his father's bedroom to go to his own room, he noticed that it was closed, which struck him as somewhat peculiar. Shortly after, he heard the bathroom door closing as well. DJ, feeling it appropriate to say hello and check in on his father since he was at his house, attempted to proceed, but Tammy intervened, informing him that David was not home and had gone out for a walk. DJ found this contradictory since he believed his father had been sick, but due to time constraints, he hurriedly left so that he could go to his grandmother's house. Roger, a close friend of David's for 19 years, shares that they initially met while working together at the plant, spending long hours together. The last time they worked together was the prior Thursday, and they were scheduled to work on the Sunday when DJ received a text from his father about being sick. Roger mentions that it was unusual for David to miss work, especially since it meant missing out on double time. As Tuesday approached and David still hadn't shown up for work in three days, Roger grew concerned. On Tuesday, Tasia receives a call from Roger, who informs her that David had been absent for work for three consecutive days. Roger asks Tasia if she could check on David at his apartment to ensure that he was okay. Tasia tries calling David's phone, but it goes straight to voicemail. She then contacts David's girlfriend, Tammy, to inquire about his well-being. Tammy reveals that she hasn't spoke to him since Sunday. Concerned, Tasia and her husband, Derek, decide to visit David's apartment to check on him. Upon reaching the apartment, Derek spots David's car parked in the lot. As they approach the entrance, their knocks go unanswered. Derek tries the doorknob, and unexpectedly, it turns. Tasia's concerns heighten instantly, knowing that David was meticulous about locking his front door. Fearing something amiss, she dials their father and Samaya, DJ's mother, urgently relaying the unsettling situation. Both their father and Samaya swiftly make their way to the apartment. Propelled by worry, and a sense of urgency. Samaya enters the apartment and immediately notices that it's not in the usual neat and orderly state. David was known for being a bit of a neat freak and kept his apartment incredibly tidy. Samaya discovers balled up sheets tossed into the closet, something that David would never do. As they proceed to David's room, they realize the bed is unmade and also moved. There were impressions in the carpet, 
from where the bed had previously been moved from. Tasia peers under the bed and spots a sizable red stain on the carpet, as if the bed had been moved to conceal the stain. When the comforter and pillow are peeled back from the bed, the family sees what appears to be a very large stain of blood, as well as a hole in the mattress. David's father carefully inspects the room and observes what seems to be a bullet hole in the bottom left corner of the closet. In that moment, he urges everyone to leave the apartment, and they all realize that they had been standing in a potential crime scene. They wasted no time and immediately headed to the Melvindale Police Department to file a missing persons report. Determined to find David, they embarked on their own search, tirelessly calling hospitals and morgues in the hopes of finding any leads. The seriousness of the situation was underscored when the authorities taped off David's apartment and news of a missing Melvindale man with suspicions of foul play spread through the local news stations. The police launched an active search, combing the area meticulously, including scouring dumpsters and inspecting garbage bags for any clues that could shed light on David's disappearance. On that Tuesday, Tasia made a critical call to Tammy. Filled with anguish, she confronted Tammy, saying, quote, I'm going to ask you one more time, where is my brother? In response, Tammy feigned ignorance, claiming that she had no idea what Tasia was talking about and insisted that she hadn't seen David since Sunday. Tasia was taken aback by Tammy's lack of concern for David's well-being. Despite the gravity of the situation, Tammy continued with her daily routine, going to work and carrying on as if nothing were amiss. Tasia couldn't help but notice Tammy's indifference, even going as far as posting selfies on social media that day, completely disregarding the urgent search for David. Tasia found it unfathomable that after spending every day together for the past six months, Tammy couldn't take a break from work or show any willingness to join in the efforts to find David. On October 1st, 2018, a chilling discovery was made by an employee of the Ohio Department of Transportation. Along the side of I-75, a sleeping bag was found containing the dismembered lower portion of a male body. The remains had been left there for several days, concealed among the weeds. Although the identity of the victim was initially unknown, it was determined that he was a black or biracial male, likely of considerable height due to his 36-inch inseam. The autopsy revealed a distinct and recognizable tattoo, a pit bull with fiery red eyes on the victim's left upper leg. Recognizing the significance of this tattoo, the coroner in Ohio promptly shared a photo of it with authorities in Melvindale, Michigan, where a missing person matching the description was known to have been sought. On October 3, 2018, just one day after David's disappearance was officially reported, David's father received an unexpected call from the chief of police in Melvindale. The chief requested David's father to come down to the police station for questioning, specifically regarding a tattoo. David's father confirmed that David indeed had a tattoo of a pit bull on his leg. Overwhelmed with anticipation, he mustered the courage to ask the chief if they had found David. The chief's response confirmed their worst fears. The body that they had found was indeed David's. A few weeks before David's tragic murder, he had asked his female cousin to accompany him to the movies. As they returned to his apartment, they noticed that all four of David's tires had been slashed. At the time, the family dismissed it as a mere incident of jealousy involving Tammy and didn't anticipate the escalation that was to follow. 
on September 28, 2018, just days before David's disappearance and the discovery of his remains, the entire family gathered at DJ's football game. It would be the last time they would see David alive. Tammy and David arrived at the game together, but sat apart from each other throughout the event. Tasia, who was concerned about their relationship, asked David about their well-being and Tammy's absence. David nonchalantly dismissed her concerns, assuring her that everything would be fine. The family assumed that they merely had an argument and that they were not on speaking terms. Tasia firmly believed that David had ended his relationship with Tammy that night after the football game. She suspected that Tammy's jealousy towards his relationships with everyone, including his sister, son, and parents, had finally gotten to David. According to David's friend Roger, David had been trying to remove himself from the relationship, but Tammy's possessiveness made it challenging. Roger believed that Tammy must have been aware of David's intentions to break up, which triggered a disturbing obsession within her, as if thinking, if she couldn't have him, then no one else could. On October 5th, just four days after David's remains were found, DJ had another football game. When his coach asked if he needed time away from football, DJ declined explaining that his father wouldn't want him to quit. The game that night was remarkable for DJ, surrounded by his entire family in the stands. It felt like a united front. DJ played exceptionally well, feeling as though his father's spirit guided him with moves he had never executed before. He recalled his father's words, quote, whatever happens, just keep going no matter what. Inspired by his father's memory, DJ dedicated his performance to him, and his team emerged victorious with a resounding 64-0 score. During the game, Tasia had received a phone call from her father, informing her that they had arrested Tammy. The news brought a sense of elation to everyone, as justice seemed within reach. However, a few days later, Tammy was unexpectedly released, casting a shadow of uncertainty and concern over the family. At the time, there was insufficient evidence to hold her or charge her with the crime. Because of this, she had to be released after the standard 72-hour period. The authorities were also still in the process of locating the remaining parts of David's body in order to determine the cause of death. Then, on October 10th, two days following Tammy's release, a disturbing discovery was made. A small black duffel bag with red straps was found along I-75 south of Finley. Inside the bag, authorities found a human head wrapped in a garbage bag with the handles tied beneath the chin. On October 16th, eight days after Tammy's release, a third call is made informing that a multicolored suitcase with flowers on it had been discovered. Inside the suitcase, they found a comforter and within the comforter, they found David's upper torso and arms. Upon examination, it was determined that David had sustained a gunshot wound below the earlobe which exited through the top of his head. The coroner established that it was a single gunshot wound inflicted at close range. There were no signs of defensive wounds or a struggle, and there were no other injuries indicating a physical confrontation. The presence of an antihistamine in his bloodstream raised questions as it can induce drowsiness. The coroner surmised that David's death was swift, possibly occurring while he was caught off guard, asleep, or incapacitated. Tasia holds the belief that on September 9th, David had gone to bed, and taking advantage of her access to the apartment, Tammy entered while he was asleep and shot him in the head. This theory aligns with the coroner's assessment of a quick and unexpected demise. 
Thanksgiving and Christmas had come and gone, but it wasn't until January 2019 that they discovered Tammy had fled Michigan in October of 2018. David's father made a heartfelt plea on television, urging Tammy, whose full name is Tamara Renee Williams, to turn herself in, emphasizing that she couldn't run forever. The U.S. Marshals were brought in to track down Tammy, as her alleged crimes of homicide, dismemberment, tampering with evidence, and felony firearm were considered heinous and serious. U.S. Marshal Andrew Battersby described the case as extremely brutal, stating that it takes a special kind of person to commit such calculated and planned acts of violence. Tammy was deemed a dangerous woman, and the fact that the weapon used in the crime had not been recovered raised concerns that she still could be armed and dangerous. According to credit card receipts, Tammy was seen in Ann Arbor, Michigan on October 16th. She made a cash withdrawal from an ATM, had dinner at a restaurant, and later took a rickshaw back to a hotel where she spent the night. The next morning, she went to the train station and embarked on a journey from Ann Arbor to Chicago, then to Penn Station in New York, where she checked into the Neptune Hotel. Surveillance footage captured her leaving the hotel on October 18th, and that was the last sighting of her. Tammy was known for frequently changing her appearance, wearing different wigs and hairstyles. However, she had a distinctive rose tattoo on her left shoulder, which spanned from the elbow to the top of the shoulder. Tasia mentioned that Tammy had a talent for disguise on Facebook and Instagram. The authorities believe that someone might be assisting Tammy, financially or providing her with a place to stay. They stress the urgency of apprehending her as she was known to rely heavily on relationships with men and could pose a threat to others. Despite her fugitive state, it is believed that she could still be working, possibly as a travel agent or in a healthcare facility. DJ shared his chilling experience of visiting his father's apartment that night, realizing that he could have possibly met the same fate if he had opened the door. Tasia revealed the devastating impact of her brother's murder on their mother. Just six days before David's death, their mother had been diagnosed with cancer. The tragedy of losing her son caused her immense heartbreak, leading her to forego her cancer treatment, which ultimately led to her passing. Despite their profound loss, the family found solace in DJ's accomplishments. He pursued a football career at Eastern Michigan University and majored in business management while taking over his father's clothing business. They believe that David would be incredibly proud of DJ's achievements. Tasia shared a poignant reflection, saying, You never know how much light somebody brings into the room until it's no longer there, and it's been dark. The family holds on to their faith that someone will eventually spot Tammy, leading to her capture. While it wouldn't bring back David, it would allow him to rest in peace. A $10,000 reward was offered for information leading to the capture of Tamara Renee Williams. Individuals with tips are urged to contact the U.S. Marshals Service at... 1877 926 8332